What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. I did something pretty uncharacteristic the other day. I stumbled upon an old piece of equipment while I was out working on a little job and ended up talking to the old timer that owned it and he explained that the thing had been parked since 1992, the year I was born coincidentally, and uh, I said man that's, that's a nice little unit there but uh, I don't have any like that and he says it's all locked up and you know it's it's pretty much a parts machine and I said oh I can accept that some machines are just bound to be parts machines and and those machines help keep the better machines running for perpetuity and uh, I said okay well since I don't have one of these my buddy Mike he's got a bunch of them that would be a good parts machine for him so I called up my buddy Mike and I said hey here's this uh, here's this machine you might want to go check it out now I passed up on this machine because I didn't figure a parts machine could benefit me. I didn't have any need for the parts. He gets there and proceeds to tell me that the thing is not locked up, the tracks are locked up, and not the engine. So here is a Caterpillar D2 crawler tractor. I was a nice guy and passed it along to him and he bought it. But he said, hey, can I store it at your place for a little bit until I can take it to mine? And I said, yeah, yeah, I guess. So here she sets, like I said, the engine is free, but it has not been started since 1992. The tracks on it are completely seized up. You can see, looking at the tracks down there, they have been sunk in the mud for quite a long time, 30 years to be exact, and they will not break free for nothing. I actually used Fat Alice to unload this thing for him. He had a heck of a time getting it loaded on his own, but I was able to just pick it right up with the old loader and set it down here and uh, he's coming over right now and I guess we're gonna try to get this thing going and see if it'll break the tracks free I'm sure I'll probably have to help him a little bit with that undertaking if we can get the tracks free this thing could be a heck of a buy I don't know if he'd like me to tell you but I'm gonna he gave $500 for this thing if this machine was truly locked up the way it was described to me then $500 would have been a pretty fair price but for a running engine and the rest of the parts even, even if the transmission's no good, the clutches are stuck and the tracks are stuck and, and wore out junk, even if all that is the case, the running engine is worth more than $500. So we're gonna play around today, I guess, and see if we can't get this thing running. And if we can get it running, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna try to get the tracks free. If we can get this thing walking back and forth even, we'll call that a win. And man, he made out like a bandit and I am kicking myself for turning it over to him. Never again. I'm buying everything I see. So I'm not sure what brand the blade is for this machine. See, these early Caterpillars didn't necessarily come with blades on them. Uh, you could buy the Caterpillar blade sometimes even. Uh, there was times when you could buy aftermarket, different brand of blades, much like you can today. You know, you could have a Caterpillar machine and put a Rockland blade on it. Uh, there's different reasons you may or may not want to do that depending on your application so this one has some sort of non caterpillar blade on it it's sitting over there we'll see it in a second but it has this bumper on it which is pretty cool and the bumper is in fact a caterpillar I'm told and I think it's cut off this is supposed to extend out a little bit more over here and it's kind of like a uh, an oil field bumper or something these look really similar to what is still on uh, side booms that you see working on pipeline projects today just a much smaller version of it so we got the blade sitting over here as you can see by the scale on this thing whew, this is the first time I've actually walked up close to it yeah she's pretty scaled up been sitting for quite a long time 30 years is a long time to just be sinking into the dirt I don't think Mike wants the blade, so I think the blade's going to wind up being mine and we can use it for uh, future projects if I ever have a need. Pretty neat. Very rudimentary old school tractors here. You got your hydraulic pump runs right off the front of the engine here. You got your regular old black pipe like you'd run your gas line in your house, runs back here to some hydraulic lines and fittings. Big old valve body on this unit. I've never seen another hydraulic control setup like this bolted directly onto a hydraulic tank. Look at that big old cast iron lid on there. I can't make out what it says. It looks like LAP 
L-A-P-L-A-N-T. Oh, it's a LaPlante Chote. I don't know how you say that. I, I know what I'm talking about, but I don't know how to say it. LaPlante and Chote or something like that. They made a lot of aftermarket blades for early caterpillars. There we go. You know what? The old hydraulic oil doesn't look bad. On the back of the unit here, we have a nice heister winch. Completely mechanical. And these are even desirable. Really, the winch is probably worth $500 to somebody. So if you don't know the way these old school diesels were started was not directly with a starter. They did eventually go to there, but originally the diesels, the starter technology wasn't there. You had a, what's called a pony motor, which is this guy here. You can see a spark plug right there. So this, this is an opposed piston twin cylinder gasoline engine, which is mounted on top of the diesel here. And basically you got to get the little gas guy running first and then you engage the diesel and it starts spinning over the diesel engine and then you uh, add compression and fuel and theoretically she should pop right off so everything is free they have the pony tied together with the diesel right now so you can see the fan blades up there spinning when i spin the pony uh, everything is free so i'm pretty confident we're going to be able to get this thing fired up Mike's bringing down some tools and some fuel tanks, and we should be good to go. All right, so I guess the plan of attack here is going to be uh, switch out to a fresh fuel tank since there's about an inch of crud down inside the gas tank on the pony motor. Gas tank on the diesel smells good. Well, I got fuel tank on the diesel because I know everybody will be after me for that. But the fuel tank smells varnished, but fine. Um, so fresh diesel, fresh gas, oil levels, I believe, look good. I never checked them. I think Mike did. <laughs> There's some in there. Good enough to run it. Yep, good enough to run it right there. Oh, that oil looks new. Yeah. Well, with the hood off, you can have a little peek under the dress here. There's the fuel tank. And it is kind of a pain to remove because you got some bolts from the underside here. So you have to take off the air cleaner, swap those out, bunch of bolts up here. And then uh, if you want to take the carburetor off and clean that, even more work. So I don't know if Mike brought a spare carburetor. Just switch it out directly or if he's going to try to clean this one up. He always had the stack covered, but the moisture still gets in there and bugs, as you can see. Oh, we're, we're gonna do everything with a wrench, bud. Let's want to see if it frees up. We're gonna be here, be here till next Tuesday.
All right, so Mike pulled the carburetor bowl off there and said it really wasn't dirty. Wiped her out pretty good. Blew it out with the air compressor. Put her back together. I believe that's ready to go back on. Pulling off the fuel rack cover over here now. Let's make sure the rack isn't stuck. Nice tools. Yep, all the best tools. Anything's a hammer if you use it wrong enough. It's good. Oh, it's nice good. And free. It's good. I can't get that moved. Well, I just said I gotta get that pin that out. Link, it just froze. Here. Oh yeah. Yeah, that one on the 22B was real stuck. All right, he's got the carburetor all back together. I guess the next step here is gonna find out if we have spark or not. Did you put yeah, gas? You put gas spark. in it already nah, too? Nah, we're just gonna see if there's spark first. It's not an awe-inspiring connection there. Oh, ground. Contact. Maybe. Spark air. There we go. What do you think this thing's going to fire up and take off? <laughs> hmm. Oh boy. There's we got dust coming out of things. Is the wire still in the mag? Mag still. I wonder if you take it off. Hold on a minute. It cranks over nice. Can't really oh, see gauge, the, gauge the clutch. See if we get any oil pressure going at. Oh, hold on. I'm getting that spark. Well, on your side. Nothing. Yep. Time to clean the points. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, so there was no spark, so we have to take off the air cleaner and a bunch of other stuff to get the cover off of the magneto. And under there is going to be some breaker points. Clean those up a little bit, and I'll bet you we have spark again. Well, we finally got the cover off. That's what that looks like inside there. She is a little corroded up, probably had some moisture in it over the years, but not terrible. There's your set of breaker points right there. Run a nail file between those for a little bit, clean it up, she'll have spark. There you go. Contact. I don't see anything.
All right, well, it's a couple days later, and uh, I guess it ran out of gas last time, so we're back with more gasoline, and uh, hopefully we're going to get this thing fired up today. going to manually uh, pre-fill the fuel filter tower there, so dump, take the lid off of that thing and dump some diesel in there and make sure we got fuel right up to the uh, pump before we sit here and crank it for an hour to build pressure. gasket he put in there. There you go. Should lift up now. Yep. Bang she's, dry. she's empty. So yeah, there's why we pulled that lid off of there. There should be fuel clear up to that bleeder hole right there. So we're just gonna do that manually. Ain't got no gas in it. Ain't got no gas. Yeah, I was gonna say, I probably wouldn't put too much more in there by the time you add those filters to come up. All right, with the filters pre-filled, it is time to get this pony hopefully fired up yet again and uh, see if this thing's finally going to pop off. There you go. Oh, run pretty good. So what we just did there was with the engine cranking over, we had to bleed out the injector lines. And then once we were confident we were getting fuel to it, you started to see that little tufts of white smoke coming out of the diesel exhaust there. And after you know you have fuel, you basically just engage the compression. And then, well, the way Mike does it, he tuts the fuel off and then engages compression and then feeds it fuel again. Me, I'm just a compression dump kind of guy. I don't know which the preferred way actually is, but 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, as long as you got compression and fuel, she should fire right up. So we've got fuel, we've got compression. We just need to get this thing turning over fast enough now and it'll fire. Contact. I didn't even give it much. Mm. I just gave it that first little initial whiff. Ooh. That pony runs good on this thing, actually. That thing was stubborn, but it sounds like it runs pretty good now. First time since 1992. That was the year I was born this tractor was parked. And uh, stubborn, but it really didn't take that much to get it going. That's a testament to this old stuff. Built to be reliable, not to be replaceable.
right, so what happens with these old things when they sit a long time is the clutches all stick and then it won't, uh, it won't steer left or right. And then sometimes even the master clutch sticks to the point where you can't get it in gear or out of gear. It just wants to drive all the time. So we're going to play around here and see if we can't get the clutches freed up. with this tractor the clutch is a per oh yeah baby these tracks are seized up bad but they're got yeah yeah we got to beat these tracks up with the sledgehammer free them all back up again it's actually driving around decently oh yeah Well, it would take a lot of penetrating oil to get those things freed up right. You just gotta work them and run them out. So amazingly, this thing started to move under its own power. And I say amazing because A, the clutch wasn't messed up and stuck, and B, the tracks were awful seized up there, but it was able to break those free and get it moving. Now Mike's having trouble, he can't get it into reverse. So we might have a transmission issue here. The fork in the transmission that engages reverse might be rusted or something. All right, well, a little persuasion and we got it into reverse. It was probably just like I said, the uh, slider on the shifting fork in there was probably just a little rusted up. Look at that. I'm really kicking myself for not buying this thing. That's a nice little tractor right there. Mike's trying to steer to the left right now, or right rather. Don't hold a lot of hope for that. The tracks honestly seem like they're freed up pretty decently. They're not holding their shape. loosened up a little bit really embracing the whole caterpillar thing you know not a bad maiden run okay. what are we pulling this off for I want to see those linkages in there for
Fired it back up here. We're gonna see if this winch works. Oh, Had to get the controls freed up. Oh yeah! Line in. out it works should just be one speed to free spool so all the way down I'd imagine it's free spool not a bad buy for 500 bucks Well, back here the next day with this little cat, D2, and what is there to really say about this thing? I guess the moral of this story is uh, don't pass off something to your buddy without checking it out really good yourself first. I'm still really kicking myself for uh, not snagging this thing up myself. It, it does need a lot of love. This is not uh, a home run by any means. As I tried to illustrate yesterday, the tracks are just completely junk on this thing. I mean, they are war slap out. There's, can you guys see how bad those bushings are worn on the pins down there? The bushings are completely gone off the pins. The sprockets are beyond shot. So really to get this thing back up into operating condition to where you could push dirt with it. I mean, yes, you could throw the blade on it and shove some dirt right now, but not very effectively. As I tried to explain yesterday, you can't steer the machine at all. Both steering clutches are frozen. So to get this thing steering again, at the very least, you would need to remove everything off the operator's platform, open up the top of the transmission, get in there to work on the, uh, the steering clutches. It does appear that the main clutch seems to be pretty good. Those tracks were really, really seized up there and uh, yet it was able to pull right through that and break those free, so that's good. I don't know what the future holds for this machine because it's not mine. My buddy Mike said there may be a part two on this thing. He's talking about coming down here for a part two and yanking the operator's platform off and doing just that, fixing those steering clutches. Uh, whether or not that happens is kind of up to what kind of condition they're in in there. If he would come down here and remove all that stuff just to get to those clutches and find out that they are beyond saving, well then I don't know. He has several parts machines, so maybe he would scrounge some parts and fix this one as it seems to run pretty good. Or he has several parts machines that can maybe benefit from this good running engine and already has a machine with a bad engine and good steering clutches. So, so I really don't know the ultimate fate for this little D2 here. My buddy Mike says that there will be a part two, so stay tuned for that. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you're tickling that subscribe button so that you don't miss any future videos on this guy. If you're new to the channel, I put out a ton of videos about old antique equipment just like this, as well as some of the more modern stuff and uh, a thousand other projects. Anyways, guys, I guess that's all I've got for today. If you like today's video, do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button down below the video there. It really helps out the channel and doesn't cost you guys a dime. If you want to help support the channel in a more direct way, head on over to dieselcreek.com. The link is down in the description. 
pick yourself up some sweet swag over there. We got hats, t-shirts, beer koozies, stickers, all kind of stuff over there at the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link down in the description. But that's all I got. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Later. Later.